What's going on sixpackabs.com? It's Thomas DeLauer, your lead nutrition coach. And today I'm here with someone that I've been working with for quite some time. And we're gonna talk about protein synthesis and absorbing protein. So I was looking for ways under Thomas's guidance at how you can absorb protein a lot easier with your meals. So I researched and I found three seemingly of the best ways in which you can absorb protein better and more efficiently. But it got super sciencey, so I brought three of the ways here to ask Thomas, and hopefully he can break down the science and make it easy to understand. So the first way that I found is having more carbs with your meal that contains protein. So having more carbs with protein. Totally. Well, you've you've probably heard before, like you're supposed to after a workout have your have carbs with your protein and everything like that. Like they always say, have a protein shake and have some carbs with it. Have you? I mean, you've heard that before, right? Yeah, because it spikes your insulin, right? It, exactly. So basically, what's going on is when you have any presence of what's called insulin. So whenever you consume carbohydrates, mm -hmm. your body produces insulin. Insulin opens the cell doorway, so that insulin allows sugar to, of course, go into the cell because we need the sugar for energy. But if protein is in the equation too, then protein goes along for the ride and heads on into the cell too. So, I mean, by and large, yeah, you're right. That's probably the quickest, easiest, most cost-effective way to just flat out start absorbing a little bit more protein is to couple it with some carbs. Is there any downsides to that? Well, yeah, you're consuming carbs. I mean, that's that's what you and you really like. You should be consuming in order to get the biggest effect. You want to be consuming high glycemic carbohydrates, right? But which means things like uh, white rice, things like rice cakes. Quite frankly, even things that are sweet like sugar and stuff like that. But you know, you're going to absorb protein with the caveat being that you might store some body fat because the carbs go through what's called de novo lipogenesis, where you actually convert the carbs into fat. So is it the best way? Probably not. Is it the easiest? Yeah. So high GI carbs to spike it quicker. Exactly, exactly. Perfect. All right, so number two is, let me see if I'm pronouncing this right, hydrochloric acid. Yes. How does that work? Yeah, so hydrochloric acid is the acid that's already existing in your stomach. So when you start to consume protein, you actually end up activating something known as pepsinogen. Okay, pepsinogen is it's a mouthful, but basically what pepsinogen is, it's the precursor to something known as pepsin, okay? And when we digest protein, we actually need pepsin to actually break down the amino acids and utilize those more. So basically, the protein is broken down into fragments known as amino acids, right? So we consume it, we chew it, it starts to get broken down, that pepsinogen breaks down pepsin, and actually the pepsin allows us to utilize the amino acids better. Therefore, when that happens, that increases HCL in and of itself. When I say HCL, I mean hydrochloric acid. So we have this mix mash of all kinds of different things. Basically, protein triggers more pepsinogen. Pepsinogen triggers the release of pepsin, the activation on amino acids, which triggers more hydrochloric acid, which creates this big vicious circle that's quite a positive circle because the hydrochloric acid basically makes it so the protein gets broken down into smaller fragments that can be absorbed. So we produce it, but do we need it to get it exogenously? That's a good question. You don't need to get it exogenously. And by that you mean you don't need to be like consuming extra hydrochloric acid because your body does have it inherently, but some people have lower levels of hydrochloric acid than others. Like you just naturally might have higher levels than me, or I might have higher levels than you. But there are foods that actually have high levels of hydrochloric acid or can help stimulate the production of hydrochloric acid. So, I mean, uh, spinach, or you've uh, done like my apple cider vinegar drink mm -hmm. before, right? Apple cider vinegar is a tremendous thing to help increase protein synthesis, simply because it has such a high acid content. It already has some hydrochloric acid and acetic acid that stimulates the production of it. Uh, Lemon, kale is actually really good too. I know it's not as exciting as uh, the high glycemic carbs, but it still does the trick. Okay, so we'll go to number three, which I believe is B6, AKA pyrodoxine. Yeah, pyrodoxine or pyrodoxine or however you want to say it. Basically how pyrodoxine works is it takes it the next step past what hydrochloric acid did. So the pyrodoxine actually works on amino acids itself once it's past the stomach. So hydrochloric acid works on the protein, helps you digest more at that level, breaking it down into peptides. Okay, whereas the B6 takes those actual amino acids 
and lets them go to where they need to go. So uh, those amino acids are broken down into things called nitrogen. And you've seen my videos before where I talk about a nitrogen balance. If you have high levels of nitrogen in your body or in your blood, it means you have a high presence of protein that's being digested and being absorbed. So basically, the B6 is taking that nitrogen and it's moving it places. It's breaking down the amino acids even more. So basically, it's carrying that dismantled protein. Um, and without B6, that doesn't happen. So would you recommend taking like a B6 supplement separately of like your daily multivitamins, maybe with a meal? Yeah, you can definitely do that. The thing you have to be cognizant of, like, so B6 is extremely powerful. Like, it is required, flat out. I mean, to all the viewers out there, it's required for digestion. And a lot of meats already contain it. In fact, almost all meats contain it. Um, very few don't. But what ends up happening is because B6 is a water-soluble vitamin, as soon as it's starting the digestion process or as soon as it's cooked, we're losing like 50, 60% of that B6. Now, I don't know, you're not a, or do, you, do you eat fish very often? Eh, no. Okay. You, I mean, realistically, like I can speak for myself, I always feel like I'm getting more protein and get better results when I'm eating more in the way of fish versus typically, you know, the typical meat that's out there. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because fish is cooked at a lower temperature for a shorter amount of time. Therefore, that B6 is protected. So usually when you have fish, you end up having much less of the depletion of B6. Whereas like if you were to say, go and cook a steak right now and you were to cook it on high heat on the grill, you're going to lose a lot of the B6 that's there. So it means a lot of the meat that's normally going to be digested and assimilated and broken down into peptides, amino acids, and broken down and digested is not. It's just barricading through your digestive system causing damage. So is there any like sciencey explanations as to why that is? Well, I mean, the explanation is pretty simple. Like the B6 is just required. Mm -hmm. But there was a study that took a look. It was like a nine-week study. I can't remember who published the study, mm -hmm. but the nine-week study was looking at a control versus just a marginal increase of vitamin B6. Basically, it was over the course of nine weeks, and they wanted to see, okay, does protein synthesis increase when exogenous vitamin B6 through a supplement form is added? And what they were looking at is they were looking at a kidney proteins, liver proteins, and of course skeletal proteins, like the muscle tissue within there. And they were trying to find if there was more uptake, if there was an increase in uptake. Well, what they found is, of course, the control group didn't see any change over the course of nine weeks, but those that took just a marginal, like tiny, tiny amount of vitamin B6 saw a huge increase. It was over 40% of an increase in their kidney protein synthesis. Um, now, I mean, that's an organ that we're talking about, so we didn't get a full measurement on the skeletal muscle, but it's still a pretty strong correlation. Um, now, mind you, protein usually consolidates in the kidneys, so you probably saw a more uh, consolidated, possibly skewed reaction there. You probably saw a pretty significant increase in skeletal protein synthesis just with a marginal amount of uh, pyridoxine. Okay, so three ways to absorb protein more to recap. More carbs with your protein, but yep. specifically high glycemic carbs. Yes. We have hydrochloric acid, consume foods that are high in hydrochloric acid, yep. which, if I recall correctly, apple cider vinegar? Totally. Kale? Yep. Spinach? Spinach, cool. some lemon. And then the last one, maybe take a B6 supplement separately with food? Take a B6 supplement or just stop being a wimp <laughs> and uh, you know get over the taste of fish a little bit because it's probably the cleanest, most sustainable, probably the most humane source as well. So. Cool. So I hope that this clears some stuff up because it's a question that's been coming up a lot on sixpackabs.com. And if you like seeing videos with, with my client, Matt, and that pose a little bit more of some inquisitive videos and, and some more questions that are questions you would like to hear, just let us know in the comment section. And also, if you have questions for myself or Matt, hit them in the comment section. And as always, keep it locked in here on sixpackabs.com. And we'll see you on the flip side.